Hey, what is up, mortals? It is me, Dylan, here, with a new video for you. Welcome to part two of What If Deku Was a Pokemon. I wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, because you're in for a treat. So, we begin. What? Izuku was dumbfounded. All Might, the number one hero, ran all the way over here to speak to him and say something like wanting to be a successor. He had to be dreaming, but everything felt surreal to him. Izuku broke out of his trance and asked All Might about him being his successor. What do you mean by becoming your successor? Why would you and someone like me? Izuku rambled about when the number one hero was even talking to him. All Might was getting freaked out with Izuku spewing out paragraphs within seconds. All Might sighed as he walked toward Izuku and chopped him on the head to stop talking. He told him to stop overthinking about every little detail. Izuku rubbed his head from the chop and looked up as All Might talked to him. Kid, you've shown me something that most heroes don't do nowadays. You went straight into danger without even thinking of what would happen to you and risk yourself to save someone's life. You have guts and a heart, kid. A real hero. Izuku felt honored to be called a hero by All Might, making him feel happy that someone saw him as a hero. He thought he wouldn't get much recognition, since the heroes praised Bakugo instead of Izuku. Plus, he didn't prove much. Considering Izuku always trained by himself, focusing on his studies and body, All Might smiled at the boy and spread his arm out preparing himself to speak. Kid, that is why I have chosen you to become my successor and the one to inherit my power. Izuku looked up toward All Might with a confused look on his face. He said he wanted to transfer his power to him, but that was physically impossible. What? What? You want me to have your power? All Might, there's no way you can transfer your power to me. I didn't even know what your quirk is. Izuku then went on another ramble about All Might. The mystery of his quirk and how it couldn't be possible to give someone else a quirk without being related to them. All Might called out to the boy to stop his rambling and listen to All Might. All Might explained the origins of his power and the purpose behind it. Izuku was stunned by All Might's story. His time left of being a hero to a brief description of OFA. Izuku stood there as All Might sighed, speaking up. I know this may be a lot for a young man like yourself, but you have the potential to become a great hero, and... I want to become your successor! Izuku screamed out, interrupting All Might's speaking. All Might laughed at Izuku's enthusiasm and passion for becoming a hero. Izuku looked up toward All Might, holding out his hand with a smile on his face. Izuku couldn't believe any of this, yet it all felt too real to him. Izuku grabs All Might's hand, and everything flashes before him. Izuku blinked and noticed that the sun was shining brightly down on him, and the seagulls were crying out in the background. He covered his eyes to block out the sun and tried to remember why it was lying on the ground until he heard a laugh in the distance. Then everything came back to him. Izuku played back the scene in his head. A few minutes before Izuku was knocked down to the ground, Izuku and All Might stared each other down from opposite sides of the beach, waiting for the timer to go and allowing them to attack each other. All Might chuckles while Izuku keeps a straight face. He was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number one hero. Izuku wanted, no, he needed to see his progress on his training and where he stood in power. All Might did a few stretches before speaking up. Hmm, <laughs> kid, for these first five months, the strength that you show me is quite impressive. And the blue fire that you can surround yourself with is also interesting. So if you dare even hold back for one bit, then I'll find someone else who can! Izuku knew that All Might was joking about finding someone else to inherit his power, but the look in his eye whenever he said about holding back, he could tell that All Might wanted Izuku to go all out. Izuku knew what he currently stood at. There was no way Izuku could take down possibly land a single punch on All Might. But he needed to become stronger and learn more about his quirk. All I hope for is to prove to you that I'm worthy of becoming your successor! All Might smiled at Izuku's confidence as he put himself into his stance 
and acted this form with Izuku following along. Once they took their stands, the timer on the phone rang, and all that could be heard was the sound of fists clashing with each other and the rush of air in the background. Izuku and All Might pulled away from each other and began to throw punches at each other. All Might may have the strength in defense, but Izuku had the speed and agility to dodge him. Izuku threw a kick toward All Might, and All Might easily dodged that and punched Izuku in the stomach. Izuku was sent back a good amount, clenching his stomach as he felt his body getting stronger. Sorry, All Might, but I'm going to prove to you that I'm strong! Izuku cried out at the top of his lungs as he sped up his body to the point that he looked like a blur. All Might was surprised that Izuku could reach speeds like that. Izuku quickly went around All Might, trying to confuse him and give him a chance to attack. And it worked. All Might was having a hard time trying to find Izuku, and Izuku could see him struggling. Izuku's hand was coated with the blue flame, and his eyes glowed red. All Might looked behind and saw the punch make contact with his face. Toshinori stumbles backward a bit from Izuku's punch. He grabbed hold of his cheek and felt a slight marking on him. He chuckles as he disappears in front of Izuku. Izuku looked around him to figure out where he was. But that was useless, since All Might put more power within him and threw a punch at Izuku. Izuku quickly put up his hands to block the attack as All Might threw a punch in his stomach once more. This time, Izuku didn't budge an inch tanking the attack as the blue flame surrounding him grew immensely. I'm not done yet, Izuku stated, stopping at each word to catch his breath. All Might was surprised to see Izuku still standing, even from 50%, but he was even more shocked when Izuku appeared in front of him in a second and delivered a powerful gut punch that felt like All Might smashes. All Might felt the blood come up from him as he was sent back flying. Counter! Izuku screamed out the attack as he fell to the ground, falling unconscious. This video is sponsored by Adobe. Adobe is redefining the digital experience through game-changing innovations that shape the next generation of storytelling. Adobe makes it easy to create, edit, and share digital documents securely, allowing you to collaborate and communicate across devices. Adobe Photoshop is your go-to application for raster graphics editing and digital art as a whole. At Weta Celestials, all our thumbnails across every channel are created with Adobe Photoshop. Adobe Premiere Pro is a timeline-based and non-linear video editing software application that is versatile and easy for beginning and master editors. Finally, Adobe After Effects is the industry standard tool for digital visual effects motion graphics, and compositing applications used in post-production. Many of our voice actors, audio editors, and video editors use Premiere Pro and After Effects to produce these high-quality videos. Click the link in the description to start creating now, and thank you to Adobe for sponsoring this video. Izuku blinked as he saw All Might walk over toward the knockdown boy and stand over him with a smile on his face before it turned into a burst of laughter. <laughs> not bad, young Midoriya. I mean, sure, you may not have knocked me down, but you did land a punch on me, <laughs> and a pretty good one. Toshinori kept laughing as he turned and pointed toward his stomach to see a bruise mark from the punch. Izuku was surprised he could land a hit on All Might, and directly in his stomach. He held onto his stomach as he reached out his hand to help the young boy up to his feet. He pointed out Izuku's hard work and told them it was paying off. More than half the beach is clean, and Izuku already looked like he could withstand some of the output of OFA. In no time, Izuku could probably. Toshinori patted the boy in the back, and Izuku's tail and ears waggled in enjoyment. I'm proud of you, young Midoriya. This place will be clean in a few more months, and the training will be worth it. However, I'm sorry I can't help you with the quirk. Besides being a fighter, those blue flames are something I don't understand. Izuku smiled at the comment of All Might being proud of him, but frowned when he mentioned his other quirk. Izuku has been trying to understand his quirk fully. Most of the info he got was that he had increased senses from his smelling and hearing to more of his mental state. He shook off the thought, looking toward All Might, and stated that he'd be here tomorrow and the months from now on. And for the last five months... Izuku cleaned up the rest of the beach, 
and followed All Might's and his strict training schedule. All Might's schedule had him following a planned out schedule that helped him gain muscle mass and clean up the beach, while Izuku's schedule dealt with him training his abilities and mind. He kept pushing himself until his mind went blank or his body gave up. The hardest part he struggled with was the blue flames and sensing. There were times when Izuku could see the blue flames surrounding people. Some would be so big, even bigger than them, and those that were dwindling. But he felt like there was something connected to his mental state. On exam day, Toshinori stood in front of tired Izuku and cleaned up the beach. He patted the boy in the back and plucked a piece of his hair, holding it in front of Izuku, telling him that he had truly pushed himself to the limit. Izuku thanked All Might for what he had done for him. All Might laughed as he told Izuku to eat his hair to gain his power. Izuku was frozen in shock and asked him why. All Might stated that there was no time to explain, except that he needed to eat something from him to gain his power. Once that whole fiasco was finished and Izuku got himself together, he stood in front of the gates of UA as the other students walked past him. He couldn't believe that he was going to do it. Once Izuku stepped into the school zone, a familiar sound could be heard behind him. Bakugo walked by Izuku, not saying a word to him except bumping into his shoulder and grunting toward him. Izuku sighed as he began to walk forward and tripped on himself. Before he touched the ground, Izuku began to float midair. He started to freak out that he was floating, but stopped when he heard a girl chuckling. He looked up to see a short brown-haired girl, helping him get back on his feet. <laughs> Oops, sorry! I noticed you were going to fall onto the ground, and I thought I could stop you before you did. No, thank you. Izuku nervously thanked the girl, stuttering with each word as the girl laughed. The two stared at each other, unsure what to say next. Yet something was going on in their minds. Something seemed familiar about this girl, but Izuku couldn't put his finger on it. The same went for her. She felt like she had seen those ears, tail, and those eyes before, but it wasn't coming back to her. The bell rang, breaking the two out of their train of thought. Izuku began to walk toward the entrance before stopping by the girl calling him. Oh, hey, I'm sorry to ask you this, but what is your quirk? Oh, uh, it's some... Um, fighter. Izuku, Bakugo, the girl, and the rest of the students made their way inside the building and sat down to discuss the tests and challenges they will be facing today. President Mike explained the exam process, from a written portion to a physical portion. Izuku was fanboying as usual, but was called out by the boy in glasses, saying it was a distraction to everyone here. Izuku apologized for his actions and continued listening. Once they finished the written part of the exam, all the students made their way to their designated areas. He looked around him and saw how huge the city was. All right, calm down and breathe. Izuku looked around and noticed a familiar person. The girl had saved him. He walked over toward her, wanting to thank her for helping him and asking her a question. But Izuku was stopped by the boy that called him out in the auditorium. He looked at Izuku and then behind him to see the girl relaxing herself. I suggest you leave her alone. She's trying to calm herself. And you bothering her would cause more problems for her. Either calling out Izuku like that caused most students to turn around and watch the conversation happening. Some said that it was the same boy that was fanboying over Mike, while others stated that he didn't look like a problem at all. Izuku stared at the boy before walking past him and towards the girl. The boy tried to stop Izuku, but Izuku turned his head and felt fear run down him. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you for helping me. The girl turned back and saw Izuku coming towards her. She nervously smiles at him. Oh, hey, it's you! <laughs> Man, isn't this nerve-wracking? This city is huge! And we only have 15 minutes to get as many points as possible. Before Izuku could say anything back, President Mike screamed for the students to get their butts moving and start attacking those robots for points. Izuku and the girl looked forward and noticed that everyone was already running toward the gates and into the city. The two jumped in shock and started running into the city as well. Izuku apologizes for distracting her and costing her time. The girl said it was fine as she went off in the opposite direction of him and wished him luck on this test. And Izuku wished her luck as well. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, I'd like to say if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. 
How are we the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist? Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. The details can be found in the description below. And lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join our team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.